Come on, Green Green Mega Eagle! Hello, folks. How you doing? Right. So we've dug the entrance shaft to the underground bunker. Um, it's concrete shaft, thirty foot deep. Uh, a load of other shenanigans have happened at the same time. Everything from, you know, restoring an old cement mixer to to cast our bits with. We've started making precast sections so we can start tunneling using the Brunelli and tunneling methods. We um, made some beautiful concrete pillars up the side to take the steel work which we've now erected on the concrete pillars and from that we're going to suspend our winch yeah the winch for the lift and we're going to have a beautiful ornate wrought iron style lift car that goes up and down and it's going to be the absolute much pajamas yeah however yeah, I've got. I'm nowhere near ready with my winch. Yeah, so uh, I think probably a year ago now, we we overhauled a Lister ST1 single cylinder diesel engine hydraulic pack. Yeah, and that was that's going to power the hydraulic winch, the 20 ton Coles crane winch that I got specifically to mount up on top of this um, this entrance shaft and raising that. We're never going to have 20 tons on it. Two tons max, max, absolute max, two tons and my battery's getting low. Once again, I've started a video, I'm prepared with my trousers down, and now I look like an idiot. Anyway, uh, about this 20 ton winch, um, look, look, I've made some hard, hard decisions, uh, and some decisions have been made for me. Um, for this original plan, I was gonna install the diesel engine and, and winch up top, um, and simply have a, a lever op lever op system. So I'd have to come to the top of the hole, raise the lift, lift up a ton of a ton of soil that I've removed, empty that, drop the car down again, and then climb back down the ladder. Yeah, and then I was going to progressively automate that system. Yeah, um, that's going to be so so wasteful as far as time's concerned, unless I stop on the bunker now and just focus on getting the diesel hide winch uh, automated before I install it um, and you know realistically all, all this stuff now I want to be done beautifully so it can stay there forever yeah because I'm going to build a workshop around this entrance shaft eventually yeah um, and I don't feel like doing that long and short of it and one of the reasons I don't feel like doing it is because I stumbled upon this this beautiful winch it's getting on for two years ago now this beautiful old English made electric winch <whistles> made by a company called Plummet in East Sussex. Um, yeah, nice, nice big old winch, right? So, again, unless I automate this or have 30 foot long cables, which I really don't want dangling down, uh, I'm, I'm going to be in a similar position of having to climb them down the ladder. So, we can very easily, however, hopefully very easily, um, put a remote control on an electric winch. Yeah, we should be able to, should be very easy. I did it last time, if you remember when I very first started this bunker and we were going digging the shaft with ply sides, uh, I got a Chinese winch and I just put um, exactly the same as this, a little, a little 12 volt winch remote system on it. I use this to switch um, a handful of solid state relays that just you get two little remotes. Maybe, maybe if you've got an excellent memory or you've only recently watched those videos, you remember me uh, <laughs> raising and lowering myself in the skip bucket with this. Yeah, um, but the cheapo, cheapo winch remote. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna use again a handful of cheapo solid state relays and try and switch that up and down. The reason I'm not so sure about this one is unlike the cheap Chinese winch that I've previously been using, this, this old girl has a, has a brake on it, the brake's actuated. I, I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out. We just got to do a little bit of reverse engineering, yeah? Um, little bit of reverse engineering and then, well, find out if it works first. <laughs> I might be rewinding the motor. Uh, but yeah, 
I don't even know what I was thinking when I bought it. It was very cheap. The fella said that it hadn't done much work. Here we go. I haven't had a decent shock in ages, so uh, what are we on? Everything burning and turning. Then it works. I'm guessing this is the big big electric motor and this is a band clamp in there or something. Uh, I don't want to strip it down but I do at the same time. You know it's important for us that that works so we don't get overrun and the thing doesn't run away with me stood on the lift or something. Change of plan, first thing I need to do is pay all this rope out and uh, let's see if I've got enough where I've got to order some more. Well, I think we're about 5 sixteenths or 8 mil here. <coughs> Obviously we want to leave a, leave a couple of turns on there, we don't want to hang 500 kilo straight off the attachment point but you know let's uh, let's walk this out the door and see how far it goes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's 30 foot, seven, twelve, eight, <clears throat> okay, so the 12 volt power supply and winch remote are working okay. Let's try and hook this up to the switching relays in the control box. Okay, so she's wired into the uh, to the switching relays now. Oh, well that works, <laughs> doesn't it? Hey, what are the chances of that? <laughs> oh, Jesus, that was lucky, wasn't it? No, I haven't even set fire to anything yet. All right. Um, well, it's perfect, isn't it? Job done. See you all again next time. All right. You know, I might just tidy up this plank of wood and get it all on a board or something. Yeah. And we do have a couple of other little jobs when I've done that. I did get some. Uh... These are off a conveyor belt. A little bit light, but we're going to make a little fair lead because uh, the the cable has to go downwards yeah the winch has to stay as it is because there's a uh, there's oil in that gearbox we do have to give that little check and there's it's currently it's mounted on a big steel plate so we've got to cut a hole in that for the uh, for the cable to go down and then stick a fair lead on it fair, fair lead uh what so like cable guides uh, you might have seen them on winches on the front of cars and that um horsa as well yeah horsa uh, I think I think that's what we call them here. I, um, I'm used to fair lead because that's that's what we call the cable guides on an aeroplane. Um, uh, we're not going to have rollers on the side. We'll have um, what? But if we keep the uh, the wire pulled in against the drum, it will mean it will roll up a bit neater. Okay, uh, I was going to make a box for this, but I've I've actually decided to do the. The mounting set up for the winch first so I can make a nicer box to attach to however I mount this winch to uh, the steels. These are these are the transverse steels that attach the two steel arches that I made that are on the columns now. Um, uh, if you remember I nearly broke my back getting them up there uh, and, and said that these other steels joining the two are coming later. That's them. wasn't gonna wasn't gonna document that. It's, it's nothing really interesting. Just a couple of bits of I-beam. But as soon as I got that out and the paint out, I might as well 
make the mount for this, get some paint on the mount and then I'll know what my box needs to look like in it, yeah? Oh. <laughs> okay, that worked out nicely, used up the last little bit of paint in the gun. Um, yeah, it's just pretty basic and uh, and rough. Doesn't have to be a showstopper this, this is only temporary. Uh, 500 kilos this has got to take. Max, so I think that'll do it. Maybe, I don't know, it's gonna have that big old plate bolted down between. Perhaps not the sort of fail safe that I would have liked here, but uh, yeah, we'll be all right. Okay, it's always nice to leave all the covers off everything so you can see where the smoke's coming from. <laughs> but, you know, uh, seems to be working. Not, uh, not a terribly complex little job we've done. Um, let's wrap it up. Okay, there we go. There's my nice, uh, nice rustic control box. Yeah? Farmyard enclosure, if you like. And, uh, these things are expensive, you know. I need to, uh, need to set a set a little thing on eBay maybe look for some a, a job lot of uh, used on new old stock um, yeah I mean it's like uh, 25 30 quid for something decent that size isn't it anyway there we go um, can't really put it on right now this this uh, this black paint on the on the eye beams still a bit tacky these eye beams tie the arches together and this sits on those eye beams yeah so um, that's where we're going to leave it today we can of course um, demonstrate it again I think I think you've seen it demonstrated demonstrated already haven't you but why not let's plug it in again better to get the uh, electric shocks down here um, I should really put a guard on that pulley. I'm just now that I've got it all finished, <laughs> I'm a little bit a uh, little bit nervous. Like if I if I go all the way down to the bottom of the hole or get the get the lift hung up on something, like if I'm not stood on it, uh, then that that cable's gonna spaghetti itself all around these electrics, isn't it? Potentially then becoming live and sending 240 volts down the down the hole um, wouldn't be great wouldn't be great and there'd be nowhere turning it off if I was down there as well uh, dear. anyway <laughs> let's not think too much about stuff like that I will uh, if I find something sensible I mean maybe half a fire extinguisher maybe half a fire extinguisher would be nice nah we'll, we'll, we'll be fine I'm sure um, Okay, so the little the little 12 volt winch will remind you what we've done. We've taken the 240 volts out of that box and piped it to the uh, the 12 12 volt DC supply to power the 12 volt winch remote, uh, which is switching to um, solid state relays and they're switching the 24 volt AC supplied by the transformer in here which is what the uh, what the switching relays in here need yeah so um, I'm probably making it sound more complicated than it is uh, um, well, and then into the motor 
brake motor. Look at this little brake. <laughs> cool. Keep an eye on that. Uh, that cable, make sure I don't go all the way into the top. Obviously the uh, proper winches in that have a, have a cutout switch, didn't they? So you can't um, can't wind the cable all the way into your fair leads, but we haven't yet. But either way, we put a couple of fair leads on there, then they're just uh, conveyor rollers. These old things, haven't got that nut done up because we've got to take the take the winch off so I can lift it up there. It's quite, it's like it's manageable in two pieces, yeah? This is probably not, probably not doable in one piece, so um, I'll break it down to put it up there. Uh, I, I think I will do a little video. I'll get these, uh, these black bits up and just make a little video of this going over the hole and making the sort of temporary lift as well. Um, the lift car itself is going to evolve once I start tunnelling um, we've got to put put these rods up and down the uh, the sides of the hole, got some 20mm rod there it's solid and um, that's going to get bolted to the with the walls of the shaft and then I've got a job lot of old uh, builders tackles builders blocks whatever you call them um, those wheels fit fit quite nicely on this uh, 20 mil. Uh, they're going to be the runners for the lift to sort of uh, keep it keep it indexed in the hole if you want, stop it um, catching on things. So, but to start off with, in order to get those those rods down the hole, uh, we're going to just have a little platform which is inevitably going to get hung up on the steps and things like that. But we'll just we'll just have to be careful until and until that's all sorted out. Once that's up they uh, should should the lift should run smoothly up and down the hole. Um, but we won't go overboard, we'll just use this initial winch as a testing platform so we can uh, I can do some learning if I want to change the design a little bit before I before I put the money into a, a nice wrought iron lift car. Yeah <laughs> it's, it's gonna be wild. Right the lift the lift's one of the bits I'm most excited about that's why I'm titivating over it quite a bit I suppose yeah anyway that's it uh, nearly finished my concrete precasts this is done uh, what have we got next a little um, a better quality pump for down the hole yeah we're gonna pump it out because the first job once I get once I get this up is to put the sump in the bottom of the hole yeah and and I want to get uh, sorted with the um, better quality pump ready to go once, once we can put that down there, yeah. Once the sump's in, yeah. So once the sump goes in, we'll have the better quality pump, constant 12 volts going down the hole, and uh, yeah, yeah, things will be a lot easier after that. All right, okay, <laughs> okay. Take it easy, folks. Hope you enjoyed that. This is only temporary, but um, you know, I think we've made a half decent job of it, and uh, we'll see you again later. Bye bye.